All right, so this is gonna be a quick test of the Sagem Com device for the T-Mobile home internet. And currently I have an external antenna for a signal booster, and that's just kind of in my room with the device sitting on the windowsill. So we'll go ahead and do a quick test, and it is 3.54 p.m., so not exactly sure how good the speeds might be right now, but usually they're okay. See, we have 85 ping. All right, so we are getting roughly about the 170 mark. Sometimes it can be up, sometimes it can be down. 180 isn't too bad. It's for the download and then our upload kind of jumps back and forth. Sometimes it'll be low, sometimes it'll be pretty high. Let's see, sitting right at about 10 megabit up. All right, so we have 185 download, almost 11 upload, and about 85 ping, uh, about 1600 for the loaded ping, and then for the upload, loaded ping is about 2200. Not too bad, but now we'll go ahead and get on to the Insego. WaveMaker FX3100. You can go ahead and get that unboxed and set up, and then we'll go ahead and do some speed tests. All right, so as you can see, this is the Ensego WaveMaker, and if you can look really close, this is a 5G indoor router, the FX3100. Uh, most of the time, what I've seen on here are people do the FX, I think it's the 2000 series. Um, but I haven't seen anything on this one, so I thought I would go ahead and get a video out there to show what it's like. Not sure if this is going to show much on it, um, but as you can see here, uh, if it'll focus in, FX3100, you can see two Ethernet ports, USB-C, uh, the reset button, the power in, and then here you actually have two SIM card slots and then under this cover right here you have the external antenna inputs and we'll go ahead and stop looking at the box itself and get this thing opened All right. see. and uh, let's see so yeah we got this we'll make sure that this doesn't show any of my account information we gotta let's get started and it has the QR code which you can go to went ahead and downloaded the app a couple days ago let's see another small paper um, probably some quick start guides and let's see you get the power adapter not too big and then you get the device itself and it kind of shocked me a little bit to see that the device was this small. And also considering that you have the Sagem Calm, um, you know, it's a bit larger in size. You know, and then this right next to it. it. It beats it in every possible way. And hopefully that'll be <laughs> far enough so that you guys don't see any of that stuff. But oh well. Um, so... I just got this. I was trying to see, you know, if I might be able to get the new Arcadian device. Um, and because th this kind of goes back and forth with its speeds. Um, I guess ever since I did download the, or ever since I installed my cell booster, it has gotten at least more consistent speeds. Um, but still a little bit of inconsistency here and there. Um, my speeds range anywhere from about, uh, anywhere from as low as about 80, all the way to as high as about 450. And my uploads can range anywhere from about three megabit up all the way to, you know, close to about 30 megabit up. And I just want something that can, you know, do a little bit better or consistent speeds, especially for the uploads. 
Now, one thing that I was doing research on for these devices is that this one, the Sagem Com, it does not support the T-Mobile carrier aggregation. And then with the Ensego, uh, it turns out that you can, or this device does support carrier aggregation, which was really nice to find out. And I'm really excited to see, you know, what it's going to perform like whenever we get it all installed. Um, I will probably have to end up getting off of here and probably uh, going through the app to go ahead and get that all set up. But I'll go ahead and walk through the setup process whenever we get to that point. All right, so it took just a little bit, but I went ahead and got the NCGO 3100 uh, in its place. Uh, it's just kind of right there um, in my windowsill for the time being. Um, and I also went ahead and got my uh, my cell booster put up a little bit closer so that, uh, you know, in the app it said that I had excellent um, signal to noise ratio. And now what I'll go ahead and do, I'll go ahead and skip over to the speed test for this device and see how it kind of compares. All right, so we are now over to speed test by Ookla. And, you know, we are connected to the network. Uh, as you can see up at the top hand side, it is a Wi-Fi 6 device, which of course, most devices nowadays are Wi-Fi 6, which is really nice. And we'll go ahead and do this test. I still haven't tested it, so this will be my first time seeing what it's going to be like as well. Wow, that was really fast. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. I can definitely tell that the ping is a lot lower. Uh, this could also be for the fact that it's not really in a, a decent spot currently for the download. The uploads are a little disappointing, I'll be straight up honest. Well, a little disappointing for the first go around. I I won't lie. Uh, I know one thing that I definitely want to see is some good upload speeds because I would very much like to get back into streaming and stuff again. But really, that's the main thing that's been holding me back. Now, what I'll probably end up doing, uh, it might take me a, a couple seconds to go ahead and do it. But I want to go ahead and put my... Um, box for my cell booster back in the location where it was originally just to see if maybe that might have skewed any results uh, sometimes whenever it's a little closer to the device uh, it has always seemed to diminish the quality a little bit so maybe putting a little bit of space between will help it out so I will be right back as I do that All right, so uh, this device, or the cell booster, is back into place. So we will go ahead and run another speed test real quick to go ahead and see if maybe by chance that may have been the issue with it. So we'll go ahead and press test again. Forty-four ping, not bad, not bad. Okay, so, so far, honestly, not really looking that good. However, I will say that the pings are really good. Ooh. Definitely not good on the upload side. And we don't even have a, a loaded ping over there for the download. I don't know what that's about. So, yeah, that's not looking good for me. Alright, so 
we are going to go ahead and give this a few more seconds to go ahead and configure itself real quick while I just readjust the device itself and we'll, we'll try to find a, a good working point and I'll probably end up doing a few uh, speed tests while off camera but uh, so far it's honestly not really looking that good. All right, so we are connected back to the device. Uh, I went ahead and moved it to a different part of my room, really just the other half of my windowsill because that's the only way that I can <laughs> really get this. Um, but we'll go ahead and do a speed test. It should be getting a little bit stronger of a signal. It's a little bit closer to my booster now, but we'll go ahead and see what it's like. Ooh, 30 ping. That's good. Okay, we're back up to the 100s pretty easily. Now, I will say I probably will end up doing a speed test from my computer because my computer is also directly connected to it. Um... Yeah, still not really looking good for the upload, not gonna lie. Uh, but also from the computer side of things, we'll be able to take a little bit of a deeper dive into uh, all the management stuff because it does have a lot of different options for uh, the management and the things that you can do within it. So we'll go ahead and go to that side of things all right well as you can see i did end up going ahead and just getting on my computer itself just so that we can go ahead and get this test going um so we'll go ahead and get the speed test out of the way and keep in mind this is directly connected to the device itself um i'm hoping i don't have to configure anything Let's see, going to 80, 90, 100, okay. Um, but as you can also see, usually directly connecting to these um, does greatly improve the, um, the loaded pings. Uh, however, currently it does look like we are still uh, kind of hurting for our upload speeds. Um, the Sagemcom device it um it was really going at it with the upload speeds however we are going to switch over to the management tab and as you can see uh yeah we got all of that uh it shows your signal strength uh you can have a second sim card in here which is pretty nice uh let's see of course i have an unlimited data plan um um, you can do port filtering, uh, you can do Wi-Fi stuff, but let me see if I might be able to uh, sign in and do a little bit more. Uh, let's see. I oh what? Okay, I believe this was it. Oh, thank God I can do this. All right. All right, now that we are back into here or whatever, um, I'll be honest. I, I don't know what all this really has to offer. I guess we should. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So as you can see, um, you know, you can change the device stuff. Uh, number formats, Ooh, a periodic reboot. Uh, we will turn that off. 
on every Sunday at 2 a.m. You know what? We'll keep that on. Uh, we're not going to be doing that. Uh, um, enable external antenna. Oh. Okay, so that's something that I did not know about this device. So according to a lot of people online, uh, the FX2000 device, um, it did not have support for um, these bands, which are the five gigahertz bands. Um, usually, um, yeah, because like, well, like the the end bands are the um, the five gigahertz bands. Uh, the Bs, I believe, are still the four G LTE bands, but According to what I've read up on the previous generation of this device, um, it doesn't look like it had support for the 5 gigahertz. But if you want to get an external antenna and connect it up to the back and to those little ports, um, it looks like you can do that if you want to. Uh, let's see, you got a software update tab. Uh, we'll actually check for an update just in case. Um, Let's see, all right, so it's up to date. That's good to see. Let's see, you can do backups and restores, which is actually really nice. Um, so you can restart it from here, ZTP. Um, yeah, we're not going to worry about that. Let's see, you got a SIM slot, so you can see that this is connected to T Mobile. Uh, desired location or desired action. I don't really care. Uh, and one of the big things is being able to configure an open VPN on here, which I may end up doing that eventually, but currently not going to be doing that. Uh, I believe this thing has like a, a built in GPS. Uh, the, 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 can we provide the connected devices? Actually, you know what? Wait. Uh, also, we have a peripheral components. Yeah, 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 yeah. As you go, and to check your computer, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll proceed. Um, yeah, I may have to blur out the current location part. I'm not entirely sure just yet. We'll see how accurate it is. Although I, I don't really care. Uh, so we have the normal APN, which, you know, uh, a lot of, a, a lot of stuff is done with, uh, IPv4 and IPv6. Um, I've seen a lot of people say that normally whenever they do the IPv6, um, that it tends to work a little bit better. So... I'm going to uh, I'm going to keep it on IPv4, IPv6, uh, just to be safe. Though I'll do a little bit of testing in the background. Uh, advanced changing these in the oh yes, we will definitely continue on that. Let's see, five G network auto. Uh, so if we want to, we can essentially do manual DNS. And of course, my phone wants to go off. Um, so yeah, you can turn on a manual DNS. So usually, uh, you know, a lot of people use like the the Google or whatever DNS services you either pay for or whatnot. Um, usually, use Open DNS or Google DNS servers. Those tend to be pretty good. Uh, so you got the, the firewall. The VPN passer, yes, that that is actually very nice to go ahead and have that there. Let's see, we got the ping to huh. Okay. Let's see, uh, oh, we'll go ahead and Mac filter. Let's see, yeah, we'll go ahead and blur a lot of that stuff. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why, but it has uh two different Mac addresses for my um for my phone so that's a little weird 
should only be a single. Let's see, IP pass through, so yeah. Let's see, obtains the address assigned by the mobile network, loose internet access, uh, blah, 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 applies to IPv4. So yeah, you can do that if you really want to. Um, usually what I see people say online is that um, typically whenever you do that, um, they they usually significantly lose speeds. However, usually the network is more stable whenever they enable IP pass through. Let's see, we got WAN. We're not even gonna really bother this too, too much. Um, definitely port filtering. That's going to be nice. Uh, and of course the port forwarding, which I am really excited to try as long as I can go ahead and get everything up to speed for the device itself. Like as soon as I can find a good location for that, plus my, um, uh, cell booster, because, uh, it doesn't seem to want to, uh, work nearly as good as the Sagem Com, which technically this one should be working a little bit better. In the Sagem Com, considering that it has the uh, carrier aggregation capabilities. Let's see, cloud services. Uh, to report to server. We'll just keep that as it is. Um, but yeah, if you want to, you can change, um, you know, to specific stuff. Uh, automatic network selection. Uh, what what is this going to do? Uh, only the specified network will be used when that network becomes unavailable. We'll revert to automatic network selection. Okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and run this real quick, and we'll we'll just see what you know is going to be done. All right, so it looks like we're back. Um, this is actually quite interesting uh, because I did not know, well, I knew that we got these two here because of course I'm using T-Mobile right now. And usually I've always been on Cricket Wireless, which goes through AT&T, but I did not know that we got Verizon out here, which that's actually very interesting. Um, however, I did not know that this is what it meant by network selection. I thought that it was just going to say, oh yeah, choose your bands as in band locking that you want to do. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that. Um, I'll just do auto network selection. What about this? Let's see, uh, yeah, well, we'll see what happens with save changes. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to end up restarting the device, maybe. Uh, okay, yeah, it was um, changed successfully. So we'll go ahead and go back to our speed test. And we'll go ahead and redo it again. All right, so it doesn't look like much change for the download or the upload. Uh, I did notice a little bit of a jump in the ping, but of course it's going to be uh, situational based. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll just get rid of that. And let's go to the 4G LTE, save changes. And we're going to wait for the page to reload on its own, just like that. And from there, we'll go ahead and 
do actually we'll go ahead and refresh just to make sure. Uh, ooh, yeah, I think I can tell already that this is going to be a lot slower. Yeah, that took quite a while to reload, but that could have just been a momentary thing. Okay, same ping, not too bad. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see a, a difference in the um the download for sure. Um, the the pings aren't too bad. Um, uh, still rocking at about two hundred. Uh, however, uh, the uploads are significantly better, which of course, uh, I expected. Because uh, usually with the five G networks, uh, it seems like the uploads aren't really that good, especially whenever you're fairly far out of range. Um, what I usually see is that the five G networks are a lot better on the downloads. So, um, locking it to that, uh, we'll do auto. What about NSA? We'll we'll change it to NSA for the five G network. See if that makes any difference. Uh, although I believe the SA is a bit better. Although I am, okay, I, yeah, I was about to say, that, oh, wait, yeah, yeah, I totally forgot that. Um, I, I didn't have it changed. Uh, I was wondering why it said 4G LTE up here, but I forgot that we just did that. All right, so we'll go ahead, we'll redo the address so that everything can refresh rather than, you know, uh, just to see if it will pick up a different server. So we'll go again. All right, 56 ping. All right, already having a pretty good jump off. Not too bad, we're at about 120. Ooh, now that, that is a giant difference in the upload. That, that is significantly better. Okay, that is what I would definitely go for if you definitely care about your upload speeds. Um, I, I did not know that that would end up doing that, so I'm definitely going to keep it like that. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and did a speed test a little bit later, about 5.40 p.m. Um, currently, I have it resetting right now because I, I have some issues with my wall outlet, and it keeps wanting to uh, turn off because of, I guess I might have a short in my uh, power strip. However, as you can see, these speeds are a little bit better. We are down to, or sorry, we are up to 225 megabits down, 26.38 megabit up. And these pings are looking really nice. And as you can see, this actually turned back on, so we'll go ahead and allow that. And as soon as it, you know, establishes another network connection, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a, another speed test. Um, so from what I've gathered so far of these speed tests, um, what I found to be the best deal is instead of having it lie horizontally, like it's really meant to be placed somewhere, uh, what I did is I stood it up on its side, and that seemed to help quite a bit. And of course, with it being 5G technology, even like the, the slightest movement um, of about an inch or so, either closer to something or maybe just a little bit further away, does have a huge impact on your download speeds. Um, that's been the same way with pretty much every other T-Mobile home internet device that I've had, which I've had the old Arcadian gateway 
I've had the Sage Calm like I have right now, uh, just kind of sitting in my bed since I got this one. And of course with this one, um, you know, it, it's been, you know, just moving it a couple inches can make or break your download speeds. And now that we are connected again, we'll go ahead and do, uh, we'll, we'll do a refresh real quick and we will restart this. And who knows, this might actually have a pretty big leap. Uh, our pings are a little higher. Let's see, we are immediately getting up to the 140s, 50s, 60s, and still climbing a bit. Uh, 70s, almost the 80s, uh, jumping back down a little bit. Uh, not bad at all. Uh, ooh. Although our, our uploads drastically decreased. Um, but like I said, again, uh, even, even moving it, you know, in an inch at a time and doing a speed test, inch at a time, doing a speed test, um, uh, that's going to be one of the best ways that you can really kind of pinpoint where a good location for your device is going to be. Now, of course I have a, a cell booster in here, but um, honestly, for some reason, I'm not sure if it truly works or not. Uh, part of me says yes, part of me says no, mainly because of some of the speed differences I was getting with the Sagecom. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move this device, you know, a little bit more into a direction where I think it might get a little bit better speeds and come back and we will do a, another speed test. All right, so I went ahead and put it in a different location real quick. Um, kind of back into the first spot where I was getting the um, just under 230 down, uh, just kind of in a different orientation uh, to see if maybe the antenna might be able to um, pick up a little bit better signal in this orientation, but we'll go ahead and see what we get. Let's see, of course, we're back at the, the New Orleans. Uh, I'm not sure why it normally grabs it. From New Orleans on here. Let's see. Ooh, immediately jumping up to the 180s um, really quick, back up into the 200s, um, climbing up and up and up. And we're. Uh, uh, the upload diminished a little bit, but it's still a pretty good usable. Um, I'll probably end up. Uh, orientating this back to where I was getting my good uploads plus the, you know, 230 because I I really would like to have that upload speed. Um, I'll go ahead and do that real quick, kind of do a, a few more uh, orientation switches and we'll kind of just see what the speed tests are like for those. Connecting back to the New Orleans. Down to 57 and immediately jumping up to the 180s and the 200s. And one thing to note is that it will probably be very dependent on, you know, time of day, network congestion, all of that. Um, it really just depends on who's going to be using that tower. Because, like I said, sometimes I saw speeds of upwards of 400 to just about 500 megabit down. And I was really surprised about that. And that was with the Sacum Com device. Um, but, yeah, we'll go ahead and do another test with it like this. Just to see you know, the, the differences in speeds, make sure that it connects to the bands that it wants to connect to. Still at about 57, uh, immediately jumping straight back up to the 200s. Um, you know, going pretty high up. Uh, kind of hovering around the 230 mark again. And jumped back down a little bit, but we are still getting those pretty good 
upload speeds. That's one thing that I really do care about. And I can sacrifice just a tiny bit of my download as long as I can get a lot more upload. And yeah, the, those are the, the speeds. Um, like I said, it's around uh, whenever I started doing all this other speed testing, it was about 530, 540-ish. Um, and now it's about 550. As you can see that we're slowly getting an increase in uh, downloads. So it could be that there was just a load on the tower at the time. It's going to be very situational based. Um, like I said, if I do, you know, see any other increases in the speed, uh, I'll continue to keep testing more and more. Um, and with each, you know, test that I do, I'll try and see if I have anything that might be, you know, a little bit better than what I was getting and whatnot. Uh, I might also try to see what my speeds are going to be like whenever I don't have my um, cell booster going um just to see what it's going to be like with raw power and you know if you see anything else on the end of this video um of course that'll be an indication of saying wow okay yes speeds did dramatically increase um but if you don't then probably didn't get much better than this but still being out of the middle of nowhere still being able to get download speeds like this pretty consistently is definitely a game changer. Uh, one thing I will know is that uh, number one, I'm on the T-Mobile network. And number two, I'm actually signed up for the T-Mobile business internet. Um, uh, the person that signed me up, signed me up for the business one, which I'm very thankful for. <laughs> um, and like again, it's going to be situational based. We're back down to like the 160s um, for the download, but it's not really too big of a deal to me considering that I still have a pretty decent upload.